Over the years, my friends, I've received numerous requests to review this tent here. This is from Lone Rider, and this is a motorcycle tent. Now, the requests that I've received for this tent have come from two groups, car campers and motorcycle riders. I've received these requests to test out this tent to give my review on it because the channel is agenda free. I purchased this with my own money. My opinions are my own. This isn't a sponsored product. In other words, the review that I'm going to give concerning this product is legit and it's honest. That is one aspect to the Outdoor Gear Review that makes it unique from other outdoor channels. You may be asking yourself, what exactly is a motorcycle tent, a moto tent? Let me explain that. Basically, this tent is large enough that you could park your motorcycle inside of it. It has a storage area that's large enough to fit an adventure bike, which is pretty impressive. Anyways, my friends, in this episode, this is a first look, a preview of the Lone Rider Moto Tent. I have begun testing it out already, and in this episode, I'll share some footage from my testing and share with you my impressions so far. So to begin, let's go ahead and let's do a component breakdown, starting with the stuff sack. Take a look at this monster. Without a doubt, this is a heavy tent. This is a large tent. You have a roll lid up at the top. You have some webbing that goes around the body, two sections of that. You have two compression straps, and that makes up the storage bag. For now, let's focus on this small bag here. You have a draw pull up at the top. And this is what you have on the inside. You have a repair kit and also a pull sleeve for making a tent pole repair. Inside of this, we have tent stakes. You receive 18 tent stakes. You do not receive any additional guy lines, and I'll talk more about that in just a minute. The lines that you see here, these are my own. You also receive a ground sheet for this tent. Next up, inside of this case, we have the tent poles. And with this tent, there are three poles. There's one black one and two red ones. Then of course, you have the tent itself. And that is what you receive if you purchase the Moto tent. Unfortunately, this company has messed up when it comes to the grommets that the poles sit into. They're non-adjustable. So if the material's not stretching, man, I'll be honest, it just sucks. Okay. It's doable, but it should be easier. As you all can see behind me here, the tent has been set up. First things first, look at the size of this tent. This tent is very tall and also it is very wide. What you're looking at right there, that's one door. We have another door on this side and there's another door right here. You have stakeout points all along the body here. You have guy lines that are integrated into the tent. You can see this little pouch here, and that's where they go if you don't need them. You have one guy line up at the front, you have one here on the back, and then of course you have those on the other side as well. There's that one, and right there is the other one. A moment ago, I pointed out this door and also the door here on the side. These doors have very cool functions, and all you need to use those functions are some poles. Two poles for each side will do. Check this out, everyone. Both of these doors open up to form awnings. So you have one here and you have one on the other side. Look at how much space 
underneath this awning that you have. If a rain is simply falling down, it's not being blown around, you can sit underneath this awning in a chair, you can have a table, you can cook. It's a really, really nice feature. To be honest, this is the feature that drew me to this tent. I love the fact that you have these awnings. In areas that receive a lot of rain, having this sort of protection is invaluable. Simply put, there's a ton that you could do with this space here. There's many ways that you can utilize it when you're out for your camping adventure. This area here is the storage area. This is the sleeping area. Now you can see here, you have this fabric inner. Additionally, you have pockets. You have a pocket here and here. With each of the doors, these could be rolled back and stowed away if you're not going to use them. On the inside of the tent, you can see that you have a bathtub floor. You have pockets in each of the corners. You have hooks at the top of the tent so you can hang a line, hang a headlamp, a lantern, whatever you want. With this back door here, you have a fabric panel that covers the mesh. If you want airflow, you open it up. If you want to block some wind, you close it. You also have toggles here if you want to roll back the door and get it out of the way. With the two doors on the front of the tent, you have the same functionality. You have a fabric panel which can be zipped out of the way, exposing the mesh if you like. That's with the fabric panel closed. And this is with it open. It needs to be mentioned everyone, on the back side of the tent and the front side, you have waterproof zippers. For the door on the side of the tent, you have a storm flap that goes over the zippers. And as you can see here, it's quite aggressive. It's about four inches wide. The last big feature to talk about with this tent is the inner itself. You can remove this if you want to. You could use this tent as a shell and nothing more if you like. Now my friends, let's go over the finer details concerning this tent. First, this is a two person tent. It is a non freestanding tunnel tent. It is a three plus season hybrid, and I'll explain what that means in just a minute. When it comes to the materials for this tent, they are on the cheaper side, the less expensive side, even though this is a very expensive tent. The fly is made from a 210 polyester, which is a ripstop, and it features a 10,000 millimeter hydrostatic head rating. The floor is made from a 190T ripstop nylon. Nylon in general is a stronger material than polyester, and that's why it's used for the floor. It too features a 10,000 millimeter hydrostatic head rating. The inner fabric is polyester, the poles are aluminum, and so are the stakes. This tent is available in one color. The company says this is a dark green. <laughs> Maybe it is. I see gray. I don't know. Dark green and red or dark gray and red. I guess it depends on the angle that you're looking at this tent. The weight of this tent is 12 pounds. To begin going over the measurements, let's start with the pack size. As you all can see here, this is rather large. This is roughly 27 inches long and it's about 10 inches wide. That is a very, very big tent. Motorcycle riders pay close attention to these measurements. Pay close attention to the size here. Now let's go over the dimensions of this tent when it's set up. At the highest point of this tent, it is six feet, seven inches tall. At the widest point in the storage area for a motorcycle, it is seven feet and 11 inches wide. The length of the entire tent is 13 feet, eight inches. The width of the sleeping area is four feet, eight inches. The width six feet seven inches since i've gone over the dimensions for this tent you could see just how big this tent is it's big enough for two people and also a motorcycle or if you want to use it as a car camping or truck camping tent you have enough space for two people and you have enough space in the storage area to set up tables chairs you can have the awnings up it really is impressive when it comes to size now lastly as far as the stats go the price on this is six hundred dollars I purchased this during the Black Friday sale and I got it for, I believe it was like 480, 490, something like that. Without a doubt, this is a very expensive tent. I mentioned before that the materials are on the inexpensive side. Polyester of this degree is generally used with very inexpensive Chinese tents. That's where you're going to find this material being used the most. In certain ways, the price is justified. I mean, look at the size of this tent, right? But then again, because of the polyester material, I am conflicted when it comes to the price. You can buy awning kits that attach to vehicles that are like twice the size of this, that costs like a hundred bucks. Now, of course, we're only talking about the fly itself. There's quite a bit more to this, but you can see what I'm talking about when it comes to price. I'm interested to hearing your thoughts concerning the price on this tent. Is it too much or is it fair? Comment down below. Oh, by the way, there are a few more things to talk about, such as add-ons for this tent. The tent does include a ground sheet that goes under the sleeping area. There is an add-on for a ground sheet that goes in the storage area. That is $100. 
That price is absolutely insane. Don't buy that, folks. That's crazy. Additionally, the company offers an awning kit, which includes two poles, two guy lines, and I believe two tent stakes. That, too, is $100. So if you want to set this tent up the way that I have it, with four poles, four guy lines, four additional stakes, it would cost an additional $200. My friends, that, too, is a ripoff. I do not recommend that. The poles that Lone Rider offer are non-adjustable. You can't adjust for the height. What I like to use are adjustable poles, such as these. These are from Green Elephant. The reason why you want adjustable poles is that you can have one side higher than the other. That way, the water will sheet off instead of pool on top. As far as the guy lines go, you can use 550 cord, get some cheap tent stakes, and you're good to go, and you'll spend a whole lot less. That's what I would do. That's what I've done. Now it's time to begin going over my experiences with this tent so far and my impressions. Along the way, I will be showing footage, and I've already begun showing this footage actually, of a recent trip that I've done with this tent. I'm personally going to be using this tent in an overland capacity, but my thoughts and impressions will apply for motorcycle campers as well. Overall, the setup of this tent is very easy. The first time you set it up, it may take 15, 20 minutes. Once you get efficient with it, 10 minutes, and you'll have it up. Overall, it's a very easy process. You begin by sticking out the back, pop in the poles, pull the tent out, stick out the front, make your adjustments, and so on. One thing that you may have problems with are the poles when it comes time to seat those in the grommets. That can be a little bit of a struggle. I've spoken about setting up the tent, but I haven't spoken about breaking it down. Breaking it down is substantially more difficult than putting it up. You have to keep in mind, folks, that this is a big tent designed to be used in wet conditions. When you're breaking down this tent, it's soaking wet. The materials have absorbed some water. It can be a real chore to break the tent down, to fold it up, and to get it to fit inside of the storage bag. Even though the storage bag is rather large, in real world conditions, it's rather difficult to get the tent to fit back into it. I'm talking about breaking the tent down when it's soaking wet at a campground or a camping spot. It's one thing to do it at home when the tent is all dry. It's something else to do it out in the wild. I wanted to mention this point before you purchase this tent so that you understand fully what you're about to get yourself into. Breaking this tent down is not the same as a typical three season camping tent. This tent is very large, there's multiple layers to it, and it can be a real chore. For the tent stakes that you're going to use to anchor the tent to the ground, I would recommend getting larger tent stakes. The tent stakes that they have supplied generally go with backpacking tents not gigantic tents like this. Having tent stakes that are twice as long will do a great job of anchoring this tent to the ground. Using the included tent stakes, you can get it to work, but you can also have some issues when it comes to the setup. If you're setting up this tent in loose soil, you will have problems. That's why I recommend larger tent stakes. In the description box down below, you will find the tent stakes that I personally use with this tent. You have to consider, folks, this tent weighs a lot, and that's a lot of force on those little tiny tent stakes. When it comes to the quality of this tent, so far, I like what I'm seeing, but the tent is not perfect. There are loose threads here and there. I found them on the inside with the inner, and I found them on the body itself. None of these loose threads scream a big problem to me, but they are there. For the premium price of $600, I would expect not to see those loose threads, but unfortunately, they are there. Next, when it comes to the space that this tent offers, it is exceptionally impressive. The sleeping area is huge. The storage area, it's huge. There's tons of space here for you to go camping. You can put your motorcycle in there. You can put your camping gear in there. You can set up chairs, tables, and so on. On the inside of the tent, there is space for two people and some gear, but with two people, the majority of your gear will have to be on the outside. Next up, my friends, I love the fact that there's numerous ways to enter this tent from the front, from the side, from the back, you have plenty of options here. When it comes to the weight and size, pack size of this tent, these are things that you really have to carefully consider because this tent is very heavy at over 12 pounds and the pack size is humongous. Carefully consider the pack dimensions of this tent. Will this tent work for you on your motorcycle? I do not know. Only you can answer that question. With my testing so far, this tent has proven itself to be 100% waterproof, impressively waterproof. I recently took this out for a trip that involved roughly 19 hours of rain. Heavy rain, thunderstorms, it did not leak. It had no issues at all in that department. Next, let's talk about the three plus season hybrid and what I mean by that. This is a double wall tent and on the inside you have a fabric inner. That fabric inner works very well in cold conditions. It does not work very well in warm conditions. Let me explain why. Fabric inners are designed to block airflow. They're also designed to hold in heat. This is what you want in a fourth season tent. These are not aspects that you want in a three season tent. In other words, a tent for warm conditions. In the summertime, it's all about airflow. That's how you stay comfortable. In the wintertime, you want to hold in as much heat as possible. With this tent being a hybrid, it's a sort of jack of all trades and a master 
master of none. It's going to be warmer than your average three season tent in the summertime, and it's not going to perform as good as well as a true fourth season tent in the wintertime. Again, a jack of all trades, a master of none. I'm sure you're wondering why is it not going to perform that well in the wintertime? Because of the materials used with this tent, it cannot withstand strong winds or heavy snow loading. This is a three plus season hybrid tent. That means you can use it in the wintertime, just not in the most extreme of conditions. With moderate winds and moderate snow loading, you won't have any issues. But know this, this is not designed to be a true fourth season tent. If you take this out in really strong winds with heavy snow loading, you will have major problems. This tent is simply not built for those type of conditions. I've mentioned this already, but I love the awnings for this tent. They are fantastic, they're very usable, they're so wide, so long, you can actually use them in the rain. The last point that I will talk about concerning this tent is the appearance. This is a good looking tent. I like it a lot. That gray red or green red, whatever they wanna call it, it looks sharp in my opinion. And right there you have it everyone. Those are my thoughts and impressions of this tent so far. Now it's time to hear from you. Comment down below, share your thoughts. What do you all think about this tent? From my understanding, this has been out for a long time. So there may be a possibility that many of you all have used it. If you do have experiences with this tent, make sure to share those down below with the community. I really do like what I'm seeing with this tent. I do think the price is a little high, especially for the polyester material, but it is gigantic, right? As I mentioned before, when it comes to the price, I am conflicted. What are your thoughts? All right, folks, I am done for now. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll address those for you. Until next time, take care, be well, strength and honor. Bye for now. I should mention this, everyone. My testing with this tent will continue, and my ultimate review will be coming up in the future. Bye, folks.